What's up, Madden 17 fans? My name is Cody, and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the top five ways you can improve your defense for Madden 18. So obviously, we're in Madden 17 right now, but what I wanted to do is start putting this on your radar because it is almost July, and we are starting to prepare for the launch of Madden 18. So I wanted to give you five things that you can do now that's really going to help your defense improve uh, for the future Madden 18 launch. Okay, so the first thing that I wanted to tell you was to get your filter together. Now, what I mean by getting your filter together is I've talked about this some, but what it basically means is you want to figure out how are you going to look at the game through a, a specific lens. And I talk about this a little bit with templating your, your game plan. And what I really mean, if I could be as simple as possible, it's like um, it's like making a cup of coffee. And I've talked about this analogy some before. It's like making a cup of coffee. You don't want to, you want to have a filter on there so that you, so that the grounds, the coffee grounds don't get into your cup of coffee. And it's kind of the same way with Madden. You want to have a filter on your, on your play calling, on your defense, so that you don't just start running plays from every formation in the game. Because the problem with that is that when you run multiple plays from multiple formations, it makes the game much easier for the opponent to take advantage of. Okay, because what happens is when you when you do that, it's easy to say, okay, well he's in dollar three two six, and here here's like the two to three plays he's probably gonna make. Whereas if you're in nickel normal the entire game, you can run cover four, cover two, cover three, cover you know you can blitz left, you can blitz right, you can do all that stuff, and he's not gonna be able to tell because it's gonna be a, he's gonna be feeling that and. He's He's going to have to deal with the potential threats and everything that you can do there. So um, what I'm trying to kind of get across here is I want you guys to figure out what are the critical components of your defense. What are the things that you want to look at and say, okay, well, I want my defense to be about this specific principle. So for some people, that's pressure. For some people, that's coverage. For some people, that's run defense. For me, it's a combination of all three of those things, but the primary component being uh, being able to be able to blitz uh, off the left the middle and the right and if I can do that I'm very comfortable in any defensive situation so you just want to figure that stuff out we, we, you know we all have different things that we're going to have to figure out but that's what I mean about getting your filter together so that when the game launches all you have to do is start looking for those five to six whatever things that, that you need to make yourself uh, a really dominant defensive scheme okay, so that's kind of what I want to look at there the, the second thing that I want to do is identify the critical priorities. And what I mean by that is you want to figure out what are your priority positions. So for, for me, there's a, a couple of priority positions. The first one is I need to have uh, I need to have someone on my team who can cover in zone who can take away aggressive catches. So I need to have two players at that to do that because I primarily like to stay in cover two this season. Now next season it might change. Maybe I want to play more cover three style. Then I'm going to need to shift that. But but I know I need at least two to three people who can do that. I also know that I need all of my linebackers to be flexible to be able to cover and blitz off the edge. Um, I like to look for block shed in my front eight players. And then for my secondary, I like to look for zone coverage. That's kind of the basic prioritization that I put on my players. The third tip that I wanted to offer to you guys, and probably the most important if you haven't done it yet, most of you probably have, uh, is buy a second controller. And the reason I suggest that is because when you have a second controller, what that's going to allow you to do is you're going to be able to lab in practice mode, figure out what plays work, what plays don't work. Because every year in Madden, it's always the same. There's going to be about three formations that give you really uh, a really significant advantage over other ones just from a defensive standpoint. Uh, it works the same on offense, and you want to find that in practice mode. That's why you need to get into practice mode figure out. For this year, it was the nickel normal, it was a dollar three two six, and I think the other one that I would say would be a big advantage to you if you ran it was the, uh, the three four, I think it was the three four normal, but it might have been odd or something like that. Anyway, it was one of the three four Those were kind of the, the pillar formations this season, at least for 
when that just about every time. Right. Back to throw. But the only way you're going to be able to find this is by having a set of controller so you can get a practice going from the lab and figure out what plays work versus what plays doesn't. All right, number four, revisit football principles. This is probably uh, my favorite tip to give because I think Looks it's the like most applicable tip uh, for your actual gameplay. So when you're playing online, what you want to do uh, is you want to figure out how, how can I use real football tactics. And what I mean by that is uh, certain zone blitzing principles, like for example, right here, on, uh, if, if this guy was smart on defense, he would blitz me off the right edge because the wide side of the field is on the left side. Okay, so I'm more likely to target that side. If he, if he were to blitz him. So things like that, where you blitz from the wide side or, you, or the short hash, the short side of the field is where you send pressure. The wide side of the field is where you start to cover for out routes, quarter routes, that kind of thing. The, 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 uh, the, the smaller side of the field is where you try to cover for post routes. You, you look for little things like that, and you just want to kind of think through, and what it really comes down to is to figure it out, ask yourself this question, is based off of where I'm at on the field, Field, what are they probably going to throw at me? Where where are they wanting to attack me? So like right here, if I was running, uh, you know, more of a traditional uh, set, this is something that I would run. Let me show you this on, on offense. And I'll show you what the defense would be able to do to stop it. Okay. Play clock winding down. Uh, like basically, I'd have two wide routes, and then I'd have the uh, the backside crossing uh, over the middle. And that's what we'll probably see 90% of the time. People will do that, and that would be their setup, even no matter what play it is. I mean, you know, plays change, concepts remain. It's kind of like a, a, a thing that I've been saying for years. That's basically the concept that you'll see. So now I'm on the wide side of the field, so now I would run more something like this, where I have some routes to both to the wide side of that side. But you do say, guess what? We can throw it, we can throw it well. So, things like that, things like that that you can do. Uh, but you want to figure that out. I mean, why would I blitz? Why would I blitz off the short side versus the wide side? Uh, first down when they're in I formation. What does that probably mean they're going to do? Uh, and second down, what are they probably going to do? Those are the things that you want to try to start asking yourself. And it really just takes some reflection. Um, you know, I could give you all of that, and I might actually do that. But what I would suggest you do is uh, just ask yourself that question and what you'll find uh, after kind of journal and ask yourself this question think about it a little bit you'll be able to figure it out the last tip that um that I wanted to suggest to you is to work on your play call. And for that principle, I've actually started using and going back to the 4-3 under. And the reason I went back to the 4-3 under is because the nickel normal, because the pressure is so good out of it, sometimes you can get a little lazy with play call. Because what happens is you start to rely more on your pressure. And I see this all the time with people. You start to rely more on your pressure than on your play call. And the problem with that is you need play calling is actually probably more important at a competitive level than pressure. Okay, so if you can get the pressure down, then you can go to your play calling. So for me, what I'm trying to suggest to you is to maybe go away from the nickel normal or some reason that and develop three through six or one of the more popular formations and use like the four three under or the three four something that doesn't necessarily get you very consistent pressure um, where it would force you to work more on your play calling specifically. Uh, so that's kind of the idea. So I'll show you here once real quick. So. Because of four three under, so I have to come out and cover four, and then based off of what I probably think he's going to do. So here, you know, gun ace, and you can pretty much tell. So on this side right here, I got to worry about corner, flat street combo on the left side. So you just want to kind of go through those type of exercises mentally to start thinking through. Um, because what happens, what most people do is they'll just call their blitz and then they're done, um, but they don't really you know, work on things. They don't really 
with it. Like, how do I actually improve the So here, uh, you know, where can you attack me from? You know, kind of a basic question. So, anyways, guys, that is the top five tips to improve your defense for Madden NFL 18. I highly encourage you guys to maybe watch this video a second time. Um, let me recap for you real quick. Number one, get your filter. Try to figure out what are the critical things uh, that you need to be about on defense. What are the critical things that you need to focus on? I would say have no more than two to three components uh, of your game plan. Number two, identify the critical priorities for your positions. Uh, that's very important. I would say again, have no more than three three positions that you say, okay, these are the three attributes that I want to look at and I need to have. Number three, buy a second controller so that you can lab, so that you can practice. And what I really want you to do is put an emphasis on lab in once this game comes out. Number four, revisit football principles. Try to figure out how do I uh, use football principles in my play calling to shore up my, my game plan. Uh, and what I really want you to get after is how can I stop someone without blitzing? How can I stop someone without trying to get someone to come free? Okay? And then the last one, um, work on your play calling as a whole. And that's where uh, I would recommend getting into, again, a, a formation that, that you can't blitz at. That really, uh, the, the pressure is, is more of a, a, of a natural, organic thing. It's not something that you can manufacture by blitzing you know, certain players off of certain angles. Because what it's going to do is it's going to force you to put more of an emphasis on your play calling and less of an emphasis on the game itself. So that is, those are some suggestions that I have. Uh, let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed this video and it was helpful, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. That way you can get more content from Madden 18. Thanks guys.